Did you know that anything could become a black hole? Even you. It suffices to shrink all your individual matter into an area one sixtillion times the size of a grain of sand. And guess what? The attraction that you have for each other will be just the same. Or take our sun, shrink it down to the size of Greenville, and here you are, another black hole. And did you know that some black holes are not black at all? Look at it. We just recently took the first picture of one black hole. And did you know that black holes have different masses? Yes, indeed. But what is a black hole? A black hole, in very simple terms, is an object that can pack a lot of mass into a tiny region of space. Now, if you can confine whatever mass to the correct small size, then you can make your own black hole. The gravitational pull from this object is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. And this is why they're called black. Some black holes are born during violent explosion of massive stars called supernovae. A star 10 times the mass of our sun has reached the end of its life. It has burned all the fuel inside and can no longer fight the strong gravity of its stellar mass. So the core collapses and the star explodes. In one second, it blasts out a hundred times the energy our own sun will release in its entire lifetime. This explosion leaves behind a beautiful corpse, the supernova remnant, and at the center, a new black hole is born. But these are the small ones, weighing just a few times the mass of our sun. Then, there are the monstrous ones, the ones that lurk at the center of galaxies, the supermassive black holes. Our own sun is sitting at the edge of one such galaxy, called the Milky Way. Bright glow in the night sky, it is made of a hundred billion stars and hosts at its center a black hole. Black by nature, how do we know it's there? And how do we know it's mass? Allow me to take you for a tour of our Milky Way and show you our supermassive black hole. Starting from our sun, some 30,000 light years away, we wander toward our galaxy in the direction of its center. As we venture down, we can see all the stars and their planets passing by. There are nebulae, the birthplace of stars, full of gas and dust. Supernovae with their black holes, pulsars, neutron stars, and all sorts of astrophysical objects you may have heard of. We are getting closer. We just cross the bulge, the central part of our galaxy, which is mostly made of old stars. And this is where we saw it, our supermassive black hole. Or better, we saw the motions of stars around it. Using some of the most powerful telescopes on Earth, scientists were able to pierce through all the stars, the gas and the dust that separates us from them and exactly trace the orbits of these stars. Using the universal law of gravity, this was enough to tell us that there is a black hole that it is calmly sitting at the center of our galaxy and that it weighs as much as four million suns. And if you think that's big, meet Ton 618, the most massive black hole known to date. It weighs more than 60 billion suns. Now, if you think that on average a teenager weighs about 120 pounds, this black hole contains 10 billion quadrillion quadrillion of them. So if you didn't know what to do with, with your children in this confinement time, well, you could, all, uh, you could have all stored them in one black hole and pick them up whenever everything was over, or maybe not. And notice one thing, this black hole is not black. 
Actually, Ton 618 shines as brilliantly as 140 trillion suns. In fact, some of these black holes are not as calm as our own. Instead, they're actively devouring us from their surroundings, making the galaxy they reside in a not so quiet place. Matter is pulled and stretched as it falls closer and closer to the hole and screams like people on a roller coaster. That scream is radiation. And the closer to the hole, the faster the coaster goes, so the louder or more, ener more energetic the scream. They are so loud that we can hear them up to x-rays. And here's a fun fact. These black holes are the most efficient converters of mass into energy that we know of. Take a simple nuclear power plant on Earth. It has an efficiency of about 0.08%. In comparison, the same number for one of these black holes is 40%. This means that by itself, one single of these black holes, uh, uh, the output of one single of these black holes is the equivalent of the output of 500 nuclear power plants. Think about it. If we could make one on Earth, all our energy-related problems will be solved. Of course, we cannot do this yet. However, it should give you a feel as to why it is so important to study them. Some of these black holes are also capable of launching intense jets, which are cones in which particles get swung up to a million light years away from the center. Going almost as fast as the speed of light, these particles make the jet as bright as 100 billion suns, and they can emit the most powerful radiation we know of gamma rays. Admire the beautiful jets of Centaurus A. Located about 11 million light years away from us, its jets extend up to 15,000 light years away from the host galaxy. Or M87, whose beautiful black hole we saw at the beginning of this talk. This is Cygnus A, with its jets shining as bright as a hundred billion suns. And to give you a feel of the size, look at the tiny dot at the center of this picture. That is the host galaxy. And that galaxy is ten times the size of our own Milky Way. We live in a universe that is now almost 14 billion years old, using the most advanced technologies building telescopes on the ground and launching satellites in space, we are trying to explore it until its very beginning. And as it is our home, it is also home for a hundred billion more galaxies, each made of a hundred billion stars, each having a supermassive black hole lurking at the center. And to give you a feel for what our universe would look like if we could see it all, Here's a picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. It contains 10,000 objects, and all of them are galaxies. But this snapshot only covers a tiny portion of sky. And to understand how small this is, go to your kitchen and get a coarse grain of salt. All right? Oops. You all done that? All right, now put it at arm's length, like I'm doing. That's how small this is. Now imagine taking the same picture for the whole sky. Imagine how it would look like, how many galaxies we would see. And as it turns out, about 1% of them, so we are talking 1 billion galaxies, host those powerful relativistic jets. And incredibly, many of them are found when the universe was very young. Their radiation is so powerful that it has traveled for 13 billion light years through all other galaxies, dust, black holes, and gas to reach us, and we can still see them at the highest gamma ray energies. Imagine what it would be like to live next to one of these breathtaking monsters. Actually, we don't have to travel millions or billions light years away to see what an active black hole would feel like. We just need to look in our home 
in our own galaxy, in our own Milky Way. In fact, our own Milky Way black hole was once active and was powering particles up to the speed of light and into the cosmos. And we can still see them in gamma rays. You don't believe me. All right, all right, all right. Let's all put on our gamma ray goggles for just one second and see what our universe would look like at these energies. Here's an old sky image uh, taken by the Large Area Telescope, which is an instrument on board of the Fermi NASA satellite and explores the universe at the highest gamma ray energies. Here, you can probably recognize the beautiful plane of our Milky Way. And there, at the center, you can distinguish these stretches of radiation, these bubbles, the leftovers from the activity in our black hole and possibly the remnants of our now extinct jets. These black holes and their jets have influenced the history of our universe and the history of our own galaxy. These are the biggest, baddest black holes. And these are the ones that we chase here in Clemson.